Android 16 Material 3 Expressive. I installed it on the Pixel 8 Pro about a week ago and I didn't expect to say this. This version is doing something different. I've been using Android since the Jelly Bean days, 2014, maybe earlier. And I've stuck with Pixel ever since Material U showed up in Android 12. But now this feels like the version it's all been building toward. Like it finally found its rhythm. If I could hand this phone to my younger self back when I was obsessing over widgets and launchers, that kid would probably freak out. The moment it boots up, the difference is immediate. Visually everything feels more refined. It's cleaner, tighter and beautiful. There's actual personality over here. Not loud, not showy, just confident. Settings got a complete overhaul. It's still Android, still a list of options and toggles, but now it has structure, icons, color, grouping that makes sense. It doesn't feel like you're sifting through a control panel anymore. The lock screen, mostly familiar, but the customization options are real now. You can actually adjust thickness, color, and clock size with intention. Editing it feels responsive. Animations are smoother, more grounded. And finally, finally, the always on display reflects your accent color. A small detail, sure, but it brings warmth. And the haptics across the board are stronger. When you tap something, it responds like it means it, especially on the lock screen shortcuts. There's a tactile quality that has been improved. Now this caught me off guard. The recent screen, in Android 15, all the options were tucked behind a tiny icon. Now they are the part of the card itself. And the way it feels when you swipe, there's a kind of momentum to it. Like the phone is responding to how fast or slow you move. Drag a card slowly and it glides. Flick it fast and it snaps away. There's this sense of physicality. Like you are interacting with something that has weight, not just pixels. And when the cards shift, there's a little elasticity. One moves and the others react. It's subtle but it makes the whole interface feels alive. It feels like there's something mechanical going inside the phone. It's got that push-pull thing, like tension and release. Home screen customization went even further. There's a new effects tab and it lets you overlay live weather onto your wallpaper, but not in a gimmicky way. It's responsive. I chose fog because why not? And for a moment, the entire screen softened. Then slowly, the mist started to drift. Not a static image, moment. Texture. Atmosphere. Rain's great, snow's even better, or make it sunny. It's in there. And yes, you can dial up or down the intensity. Want the full cinematic fog rolling across your screen? Go for it. Burn some batteries. Uh, it's worth it. There's also this new cinematic depth effect. You have to install it separately, but once it's on, you get the parallax kind of an effect in your wallpapers. It's oddly satisfying. Now, when you get notifications and you go to swipe one away, you feel a pull. A real physical pull, like it's slightly glued to the one above and the one below. I swipe, expecting it to just disappear like always, but no, it pushes back. There's this weird tension, like some invisible elastic is holding it in place. And then snap, it breaks free. The others wobble slightly, like they have been affected too, like they are all part of the same system. It's such a small thing, and it doesn't change the function, doesn't make the system smarter, but it makes the entire experience more alive. Like I'm touching something with mass, something that pushes back. So with these dialed in haptics, it's like peeling off a physical layer of the UI. Tactile, deliberate, Google's finally giving motion its due. Physics actually matters again. Even the lock screen has changes. The way it picks out and frame faces or objects, it's clean, intentional. There's depth now, and it shows. The unlock transition glides so smoothly. I catch myself not rushing through it just to enjoy how it moves. The position for the at a glance info has been changed. And with ambient always on display supposedly on the way, with wallpapers fading in gently while the screen sleeps, this is going to be a visual treat. And I am all in on that. Quick settings though, that's not a refinement. That's a redesign. Since Android 12, it's been incremental changes. This time, it's a clean slate. The new panel is translucent, softly frosted. It has texture, but doesn't try to be glossy or overly styled, like iOS or One UI 7. Toggle shift shape now, rectangle if it's active, circle if it's off. It's clever because it gives each state a shape, not just a color. More readable, more usable. Customization is smarter too. 
No more dragging tiles around like it's a puzzle game. Now it's a tap to add, tap to remove. And if you change your mind, there's an undo button. Obvious in hindsight, but it changes everything. Even the smaller things, the status bar icons finally got some love. Battery, Wi-Fi signal, they have all been redrawn. That simplicity feels current, less dated. The app drawer, no more blinding white or crushing black. Now it's got a soft opacity, light enough to feel breathable without losing focus. Volume sliders got a total glow up too, but it's not just about how they look, it's how they move. When you drag them, they respond like you're moving a dial with actual tension behind it. You feel the elasticity, the same sense of subtle physics. Again in the brightness slider, it's everywhere now and it works. The only thing I'm still on the fence about, the toggle design underneath. Visually, I preferred Android 15's flatter look. This new one is a bit more ornamental. Still functional, just a bit colder, more stylized. You notice it in the lines, the shadows. There's less softness, but where it really wins, where it justifies that shift, is in how it responds. There's a sense of feedback, of presence, that's improved substantially. That said, not everything moved forward. When I swipe up to open the app drawer now, the keyboard doesn't show up automatically. It used to be. It saved time, especially if you have got a lot of apps. Now it's gone. Probably temporary, but it slows things down. For me at least. And then there's the at a glance widget. Still there, still fixed in place. Still can't be removed. It's smaller now, yes, but still locked. Still hovering in a space I would like to use differently. But then there's this other kind of change. The kind you don't see right away. It's in how the phone reacts when you touch it. The way it vibrates. The sound it makes when you type. When you swipe. It's all tuned differently. Typing especially. You feel it immediately. And the wild part. This is just the beta. There's more coming. More polish. More features. More of those invisible tweaks that don't make headlines but change how it all feels. Because right now Android 16 doesn't just look different. It behaves differently. It feels like the OS is finally awake, not trying to impress you with gimmicks, but communicating in motion, in rhythm, in texture. If you want to try it, it's simple. Open your browser, head to the Android beta program site, log in with your Google account and opt in. The update shows up under system settings, download, install and that's it, done. That's it for now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.